For those that were with us this morning for my welcome, you might remember that I gave a definition of the word symposium and included the phrase drinking party. And I've, that's weighed heavily on me all day. <laughs> thought about that a lot. I want to address it now. I don't know if anyone knows as part of this this part's true. The the, the part as part of Alcoholics Anonymous 12 step program. <laughs> step number 12 is you have to help someone else. It's not altruism. It's nothing like that. It's help yourself by helping someone else. And how many times did we hear that today? We heard people, real genuine leaders in the community, in their business, in their industry, beyond that. People, genuine leadership people, real people, not roles. And we heard how it was so important to them to help other people. And we heard it many times and I have so much respect for it. And I'd like to stand before you and tell you I was one of those people, but I'm way more selfish than that. And I, and I'm working really hard not to be. So it was a real inspiration to hear people so successful, so much knowledge. And for us all to take away from that, the inspiration to go and all be better in our lives all the time. And um, I felt grateful to, to be a part of that. So thank, thanks very much for that. Um, I would just like to quickly acknowledge the people that made presentations today and I there wasn't anybody that made a presentation today that didn't reach me in some place, that didn't resonate with me. And I just want to quickly, it won't take me long, I know you've had a long day. Um, just want to quickly acknowledge a couple of these things. Um, when Daryl and John, and I'd also like to recognise John here, did a great job of extracting Daryl's knowledge and his wisdom. And when he said, all the work, all the logistics has to look spontaneous to his customers. It's, it, there's a real business lesson here is that it's so tempting to tell everybody and show everybody how clever you were in coming up what you came up with. It's so tempting to explain to people, I went to a lot of painstaking lengths here for you um, and you're the beneficiary of it, but they don't care. They only care about the outcome and then that's the point that Daryl was making and he did it so much more eloquently than I just did and it was, it was a real inspiration to hear you speak about leadership and workplace culture. I have a huge amount of respect for the way that you've run your entire business with workplace culture at the centre. Thank you for what you contributed today. I got the impression of a man, it was the first time I'd ever met him, I got the impression of a man that he's selfless despite everything that he's achieved. And he's got a lot of humility he reminded me of my father, and that's the biggest compliment I could pay anyway. Um, and then we heard from Michael, who spoke about, and I thought this was really on point, the, um, the cost of living pressures that we have in our sector and in economic development work, and it is so prevalent. We at Port Macquarie Hastings Council have done a lot of work on um, housing affordability and the related issue of homelessness sad things to have to work on strategically, important things, and the cost of living is impacting on us all in different ways, and we're really fortunate to have it impact on us the way it does, because it's impacting other people far more seriously. But it's such an important context for us to think about, so thanks for raising that, Michael. He had some great data for us, didn't he? And the reality is that all governments, <coughs> excuse me, that all governments are under pressure the financial performance, it, you saw that in all the data that we've presented today. It could, you could easily think that our sector would be an arbitrary spend and it's an easy way to save some money, to not make expenditure. And I think if we do a better job of articulating the way that the speakers did today, that this is not expense, this is driving value. Um, and, and I was really impressed with the way that the speakers did that today, particularly you, Michael, and he's got a passion for it that's infectious, hasn't he? Hang around with Michael long enough and you'll start to speak about it passionately too. 
Thanks, Michael. And then Nick with his authenticity and his honesty, his impressive ethics and values. And then my favourite part was when he started to talk about the psychology of campers. And the, part, and the part where he said, people just walk into each other's tents and say, show me what you've got and let me show you. And, and I couldn't help but think, wouldn't it be a better world if we all acted like that? Not just when we were camping all the time, when we showed that kind of interest in each other and that openness and the honesty. And I really, that really resonated with me that he's using that platform to drive something that is social change and social co cohesion. And for me, in my role at Port Macquarie Hastings Council, I don't feel like local government or any, any government or any society has been under more pressure for social cohesion since the recovery from COVID. It, put a, uh, it, it, it created a lot of loneliness and a lot of isolation for a lot of people and it's a really important issue. I was really pleased with what Nick spoke about. My favourite part of Libby's presentation was when she said, let artists lead. I spoke about Port Macquarie Hastings Council's vision this morning and it uses the word innovation. It says it will be the most livable, sustainable, innovative place in Australia. That's a really ambitious goal for a local government and it's that way deliberately. Included in innovation, and what Libby is driving at with let artists leave is risk. And so it's not a natural thing for government to embrace risk. That's the antithesis of the, the basic premise of government. Libby lays out a fantastic platform of the value that we miss when we don't embrace that risk. Embracing that risk doesn't mean we don't have controls, but Libby and her stakeholders, they need to have that freedom and we can give it to them and still maintain our risk management and our risk appetite. And it just needs to, I think when she spoke about the value of partnerships in a space, it really made it so important that this is not a conversation between local government and Libby and her constituents. It's, it's a conversation for all of us. And then how inspiration was how inspirational was what Ian presented. The beautiful images, just spectacular. But more so, the conservation message. Couldn't we all implement something from what they're doing on Lord Howe Island? It's just an amazing microcosm of what should be happening everywhere. I just was so inspired. I wasn't aware, I have to say. I learned that today, and thank you for teaching me. And then we heard from Timmy, who spoke about depth of experience. And I think that's so important for all of us. I'm going to very briefly tell a story at the end about why that meant so much to me, Timmy. Thank you for that. And he spoke about timeless, the timelessness of the island. And I think this is one of the things that naturally draws people to nature. And we live in such a beautiful place, it's coastal, we've got beautiful beaches, absolutely beautiful beaches, we've got a great climate. Um, and we've got the hinterland and it's all beautiful and part of what, what um, attracts people to that and, and the, the calm that people feel in that environment is the timelessness, I think, as a haven. I think it was a great observation and I really enjoyed it. But in your presentation, you spoke about gratitude to Port Macquarie. Well, we're grateful for you and we're really grateful for you and we're grateful for all of the work that you do and I speak for all of the community when I say that and I can do it with confidence. And so thank you for everything that you offer this sector and the community more broadly. And then we had Peter and Belinda who made me regret my decision to go to the gym last night. <laughs> two beautiful people, aren't they? They're two wonderful people. It's so authentic and it's so genuine. It's just lovely to have a place of honesty in, a, in an environment like this is so wonderful. And then Steve provided some wonderful context, really, really good context. And if ever local government and local governments in a given region, for us, ours, need a message about the value of councils working together in a region under 
models like the one that Michael works under. If ever we needed a stronger message than that, and I think we could just got it from Steve, we really can do a lot more if we get aligned with what the state are doing, what each of us have of their own ambitions. Yeah, we have some differences and we have some unique challenges that we have to take ownership of ourselves, but we also have a lot of intersection that we can work on together, and Steve did a really good job of laying that out for us. Thank you for that. Um, I think it's also very clear from both Steve and Bede's um, presentations the importance of advocacy. And I really enjoyed the slide about the drivers for present for sorry the drivers for visitation. I thought that's a really important uh, piece of data, not just for who's coming here, but what do we do about that in the future? I think it's really important. Um, and then B with some brilliant data, some international data, his reference to the airline and the insights there. It's really important for Port Macquarie Hastings because we have um, a, a really good regional airport um, and we're really well placed for that. And so we look forward to playing an important regional role in some of our neighbouring local government areas would utilise our airport as well. So I think it's great opportunities there if we continue to collaborate on those things. So thanks, thanks very much for that, Bede. Um, there was a bit of a discussion earlier today and I think I, in my welcome, I lit some of this up accidentally and I, um, it was about experience. And I heard some things today that made me think about some of my own experiences in tourism and I'm very quickly, even though I'm really self-conscious about doing so because it's a little bit indulgent, but I'm really quickly going to tell you two stories about my own experience that I think at the time I didn't realise what was happening. You'll hear it in the story. The point of the story before I started is that it's not just an experience, it's not just a thing that happened to you on Tuesday between 2 and 4. It's way more than that. These things can be life-changing for people. It's not just a piece of data on a slide for people. When it's a really genuine experience, it can be something much more meaningful than that. The first story I want to tell its brief is Ben Quilty, the Archibald Prize winner. I was fortunate enough to meet him once. And I had my little boy with me. And he'd just returned from Kabul and Kandahar, where he'd been on Operation Slipper with the Australian Army, and he was very affected by it. And I got to spend some time one-on-one -on -one with him through a very fortunate set of circumstances. And I saw a troubled man that helped me to understand his art and understand the impact that it was having and how, many, how far people would travel to look at it, let alone to hear this story. And there's a flickering flame for art in me until that moment which became a raging inferno that I've given to all of my children. The boy that was with me that day is embraced and art is the most important thing in his life. That he's given to his little brother, my seven-year-old son, whose art adorns my office, that makes people that visit me raise their eyebrows and don't know whether to ask about it or not. It's just a wonderful way that it's meaningfully changed my family's life and hopefully others. And I'm just one person and Ben Quilty wouldn't even remember that. But I do, and I and my family remember it. And it's just when you talk about the types of experiences that we've spoken about today, that's changed my life. I've never told that story that way before. Today made me do that. And then my second story is this. I was in Tasmania 25 years ago. And I was in a cafe. I was sitting in front of a fire. We were there as a family. I was having a coffee. And I was kind of wasting the afternoon in this terrible weather. And this really... Um, really unusual character came running out of the kitchen. It was like a caricature, this guy, and like something out of an animation with crazy hair, a bit of mad professor type look about him, and he had, a, he had a dessert on a plate, and he ran out and he gave it to us, and he said, I just created a new dessert, and I want you to try it. 
I thought it was a way to sell it to me, but it wasn't. He gave it to me. He gave it to us and said, and then he crouched down on the coffee table and waited pensively for me to eat it so that I could give him the feedback. 25 years ago that happened. It's not anything really, is it? But I still remember it. And what I remember is how a person I don't know, a person whose name I don't know, created this really meaningful thing in my life. And if only it hadn't taken me 20 years to realise that the gift of life is in the giving. And he could have, I could have realised that then. He got more out of giving it to me than I got out of receiving it. And I think that's a really important message in the space that we're in, that if we keep, a, keep customer centricity about this, I think we can achieve a lot together. I feel really hopeful about the future, both economically and for the society and for the community that we're leading as well. I'll just finish by saying Port Macquarie is a beautiful place. It is undoubtedly a beautiful place. I gave a presentation recently where I, put, where I presented our population forecast to 2046 and some demographic profiling. I had a question from the floor that said, Duncan, why do you want all this growth? And to which my answer is, it's not mine. It's not my ambition. It's not my population growth. Who wouldn't want to live here? It's a fantastic place. But I just want to leave you today by saying to you, you walk around and you'll see some of the images that we saw in big slides there. You'll see those places. You'll think it's a beautiful place. But it's the people that you'll remember. There's some remarkable people here. There's some wonderful people here. They've been so welcoming to me in the time that I've lived in Port Macquarie Hastings that I now consider it my home. I've only been here four years. Um, so to think about it that way speaks volumes for the community that I live into, and I'm proud to be here. So thanks very much, everybody.